The smartest Webflow developers set default styles. They allow us to work faster and generate cleaner site code. Here's the essential defaults to set, ranked from least to most important. First, set your all image tag in Webflow to a default style of object fit cover so it doesn't get stretched. It's easy to forget to apply the style, so set it as a default and we can always override for the few that are different. Each time we click the cover button, Webflow adds a new line to our code and the larger our site is, the more bloated this can be. So by setting the default of all images to object fit cover, we don't have to reapply it to each class. This allows us to work faster and also cleans up the end result. Next, give all sections a position relative by default so they can have absolute content inside. We could reuse this section class across all our sections and give it a combo to change each one, but this is a messy way to work and it doesn't show us the section name in the navigator. There's no all section tag we can target in Webflow, so instead, in an embed, we can target the section tag like so and give it a default position relative. When we save that, this will apply to custom elements with a tag of section or even Webflow's native section element. In either case, the default is position relative, and when we add our own class to this, we can override that default if we need. Links and buttons are the second most important defaults to set. Links have a blue text color and underline by default. Buttons have some padding, a background color, and text align center by default. So in our embed, we can target the link tags and the button tags like so. We'll give the links a color that inherits from parent font color, no underline. Buttons will remove the background, padding, and text align. If we save that, all the defaults should be cleared and we can add our own custom styles if we'd like. This next default is the difference between a site that works against or with you. And that's the defaults we apply to our containers. We know containers need a max width by default. Let's pull one from our Webflow variables. They also need margin auto left and right to center them. Then we'll need 100% width in case they're ever inside a flex, that way they don't get squished. They'll need some left and right padding to keep children off the edge. We'll apply our padding horizontal main version on each side. And they need a position of relative, so they sit on top any sort of absolute background images or visuals. They also need some top and bottom padding. In the past, I used to apply this to the entire section, my padding vertical main, but this is so much better to be applied directly to the container itself. That way, if we ever need to give this container a combo like is hero, we can give this a min height like 100VH, and that 100VH includes the top and bottom padding. We can even apply flex to this since there's no extra things inside and just distribute them apart. There's so many advantages to using less divs and keeping all the padding groups on a single element. Now, to make this responsive, these large, medium, small container paddings and top and bottom paddings need to be adaptive on each breakpoint. And since Webflow doesn't offer adaptive breakpoint support yet, we can have some adaptive spacing variables pre-built out in Webflow that just automatically shrink on each breakpoint. And when we apply what our main uh, top and bottom section padding should be, we can just choose from any of our different adaptive sizes. I'll go six rim in this case. So to learn how to build an adaptive spacing system, check out this next video here.